don't think you're quite ready for that yet, but your kids are going to love it. Welcome to Lamora, a journey in time. Let's get ready for devlog number 10. I had planned in this devlog to show more of the work that I've been doing over the past two weeks, but it turns out once I'd actually stripped down the B-roll, there's just too much. So what I'm going to do, I'll split it up. Next week, I'm going to show a lot more of the user interface and the load menu stuff that I've been doing. And this week, I'm going to show you the transition from the chapter select that we were looking at last week in last week's devlog. So if you haven't seen that already, then feel free to have a look at that one. But we're going to see that transition and the cinema machine actions, the timeline on how we're actually getting into the portal and loading into the new level. And if you've already been on our Discord, then you've probably seen a couple of these videos floating around. And can I just say a big thank you as well for those that have been providing feedback on this process. It's been really invaluable. So there's some parts that I've had comments, oh, it's a bit too fast or it's a bit slow. Uh, you need to do this, you need to do that. And it's feedback like that that I really value. One, because it makes me feel like I'm heading in the right direction. But two, it also, it motivates me because I know that there's others along on this journey with me. So I really do appreciate it. So shameless plug here, if you're not joining us on our social channels such as Twitter or Discord, then please feel free to join. Uh, the links will be in the description and we'd love to have you along. But for now, let's jump into the cine machine stuff, let's jump into the timelines and see what all that work was about. So I started out getting the cine machine basic stuff in line with the camera, finding out where I wanted the, the dolly track to go and little bits like that I didn't actually record those I forgot to get those in place uh, when I was recording but the things that you see happening now are me just getting stuff ready uh, trying to get the uh, the animations working in the way that I want to now you can't see it on here because unfortunately I have my game preview over in another monitor so it's not actually recorded but through all of this I'm sort of I'm going back and forth trying to find out the best place to um, to have the camera going trying to get the right angle as we know a lot with game development is all about the angles that we're looking at things and and that really has the impact at that point so i'm doing that i'm, I'm constantly looking at my game screen and i'm moving the timeline back and forth and then just moving little bits and working them around like getting the lifts in place and making sure that the character's in place uh, just where i want it so everything looks just right so for the keen-eyed of you you will have noticed when the portal uh, shows, it's actually showing some of the back wall of the building surrounding it. So what I've had to do now, as you'll see on the screen, is go into Blender and I've grabbed the model that I've used from the assets I'm using. And this is my, I can only say it as my newbie way of trying to figure out how to remove parts. So you initially saw the wrong way. And then what I actually found out afterwards is I need to go in and do a, a boolean on it. So you can put an item in there and you basically just delete a section based on that object that you're combining with it. So what I was doing here is just trying to figure out exactly where that needed to be in, in relation to the portal in my scene. So you'll see it flick back and forth between Unity. And I was basically counting the pillars from the left and then seeing how many pillars it took to get through there. So this is me building that initial cube. And again, doing it badly, what I needed to do was just resize the whole thing, but ended up extrude, extruding it, I believe. That's what I ended up doing, uh, which wasn't quite the right way. So I went back and forth on this bit a little bit. It, this is very new to me. Blender I use on the rarest of occasions. So the problem I find is because I use it so little, uh, I don't do a very good job when I am in it. I need to dedicate some time to really get used to it and do some of my own modelling really. So that's something that's on my list to do, but at the moment building the game is taking priority. So that's what's happening at the moment, we're just trying to make a hole in the wall and make it the right size as well. So we can see now I've got my head screwed on straight and I've made a cube and actually resized it this time rather than extruding it, which obviously worked out for the better. And I've pretty much got the size where I needed it and the boolean works there so we've now got a hole in the wall which is exactly what we needed to do so I export this and then I get it back into unity so the way I figured this would work bearing in mind it all needs to happen on the timeline with cine machine is I would actually have two um, two prefabs two game objects on the scene one for the hanger without the hole and one for the hanger with the hole 
And the idea of what I would do at that point is when the timeline hits a certain spot where the portal activates, it basically deactivates the one building that does have a um, doesn't have the hole and then it would activate the one that does have the hole because that then allows the portal to go straight through the hole and through the wall so we don't see any clipping. So what I then started to do is get the Cine Machine timeline uh, stuff going again just so I can see where the portal actually goes through the wall and what I was especially looking for was any clipping so to see whether I'd cut the hole big enough basically uh, to see whether the portal was just going too far and it turns out it wasn't actually big enough the hole so I had to go back into um, Blender again and basically cut a bigger hole but thankfully this time given I knew how to chop a hole in a wall it took a, a minute rather than half an hour figuring out how to do it so it's the same process again um, I just did a boolean on it and then I trimmed up a couple of little bits just to get rid of some stray uh, vertices on there and then exported to Unity, got it in there, and essentially made sure that it actually fitted. At that point, I had to adjust the timeline again a little bit, start disabling a few more, um, a few more panels. And it turns out, once I was playing with it again, it still wasn't quite right. I needed it bigger because the portal sort of bends around so much. It just needs a whopping great hole. Now, what's interesting though is you'll see in a minute when when you see the finished product you don't actually see this whopping great hole and this is the thing is I suppose it's smoke and mirrors to a certain extent it's all about the angles that we choose to use within our game so are we able to hide these whopping great holes um, it's serving a purpose it was it was a interesting way to do it I suppose from my perspective um, I could have split the model up and just taken a little bit of the wall out that I needed to but this is essentially the way I decided to do it and it's worked really really well and as I say, when we look at the finished product, you'll see how well it has actually worked. So I did the same process again. I got it back into Unity and then again, more and more testing just to make sure that I can't see any clipping when you're actually going into that portal. So after a few retries and some more cutting of holes, I managed to get it to the point where I was happy with it. I managed to disable enough stuff in the timeline as well. And we got to the point where I was happy to show people, and as I say, some people might have already seen this, but this is the finished product of us going from the menu, through the timeline, straight into the portal, and loading into the starting vault, which will be the beginning of the prologue. So let's enjoy this and take a look. And there we are all our hard work paid off we're loaded into the starting vault and if i do say so myself it's quite a nice way to load into a new game so i hope you enjoyed that so i'd like to introduce a new segment to our devlogs and i've dubbed it at the moment couch time with alan feel free to come up with a better name but i just i want to share some thoughts i did this in last week's devlog and i thought i'd do it again in this week's devlog because Sometimes I think we can get ourselves in a mindset that we get stuck in and we might need to sort of get, our, get ourselves out of it. And with game development, I think that's very much the same. We often find that there's indie developers out there who are making absolutely fantastic games. But the problem is they're not telling anybody about them. So I've spent a lot of time over the past couple of weeks, well really since I started development on Remora, I've spent a lot of time trying to build the community and the social media side of things as well. And I'm finding this really, really valuable for a couple of reasons, really. One, obviously I can get feedback on whether something is good or not, whether the community actually likes a feature that I'm implementing. But I also find that the feedback from the community and the involvement from the community, it really does help with motivation. Because let's face it, as an indie dev, it's, it's rare that you're actually working on the project full time. Obviously there are indie devs doing this, but some of the time we're having to work full time. We've got family responsibilities, other things that we need to do. And then at the end of the day, when we're tired, 
we feel we need to work on our game to push it forward. And that's the, that's the moment that our community, the people that are around us, they can really help boost us. Because when they get excited over something, we get excited. And I'm finding that motivation to be really, really beneficial. So if I had one tip to give out to people that are just starting in this area in game development is build a community, find some people that enjoy your idea as much as you do and bring them along for the journey. You don't have to do full on devlogs like I've been doing, but tell people what the game's about. Give them tidbits that they can enjoy because then their enjoyment can come back to you. Either way, that's enough rambling from me today. So thanks for watching this devlog. As always, feel free to subscribe, hit the bell icon if you want notifying. If you can comment and leave a like as well, that would be greatly appreciated. But if not, we'll still see you in the next one.